I've got some Timberland frames. Wow. Oh, he's making glasses as well now. Yep. Yeah. Fucking Timberland. What's up, people? Welcome to the GSE Podcast. I'm your host, Lauchi, and this week I'm joined by Johnny. Hello. And Jamie C. Hello. Jenny is apparently still in Italy. I've forgotten where it was already. Jamie, where was he? He's in Parma. He's in Parma. She's yes. uh, famous for its cheese and its architecture. And ham. Parma ham. And, and Parma ham. That's, that's the culture bit for the show. <laughs> uh, how are you guys? Good. Very good. All right. This is All getting right. weird now. This is three weeks without Gianni. I know. Yeah. Don't you miss him at this point? At first, I was like happy to just bag on him not being here, but now I just miss his sexy face. How dare he have a life? I know. The Italian bastard. How dare he go back to his country? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, usual, usual start, lads, uh, with what we've been playing slash doing this week. Johnny, what have you been up to, man? Uh, just been playing Ninja Gaiden on the Vita still, but I spoke about that last week, so we'll forget about that. I think I'm on like chapter 11. Anyway, last week I went to Hyper Japan in London. You did, man. Tell us about it. It's the first I'd heard of it, to be honest, but it sounds amazing. Yeah, it runs every year, I think. I'll be going back next year. It's just everything, all things Japan. All right. Um, so lots of food. I, lots want you of to, food. I want you to recount your experience there, man. From start to end, what you got up to? Uh, In like no. really, really precise detail. <laughs> ben, I will admit, I just thought about you the second I walked in because we started like, like from the, you know, right at the corner and I like walked our way inwards. Um, we should, so the very first stand was like all anime characters, like toys and mouse pads and like bags and teddies and figurines and. Um, wallets, absolutely everything. Also, like all different anime and video games. It was a really good, impressive store. Um, not badly priced either. So, so, did you not buy anything? I was going to, but um, what were you going to buy? Uh, there were some. Of the, there were some really cool former Alchemist like uh, keychains and some like small uh, plushy teddies that I was thinking about. But you know, something that you can probably get. Like online, but seeing it in front of you is pretty cool. There's yeah. some really nice, rare, like boxed up, uh, like big figurines, which look really cool. How much? How much were they running you? Realistically, mm. how much am I going to have to take with me next year when I go? For you, about hundred. But do you reckon about hundred pound would be enough? Oh, I would have thought five hundred. Yeah, no. I'm thinking something around there as it, well. It depends how much you want to get. I mean. Things aren't badly priced, like uh, like figures and stuff, like thirty quid, like for like, like being really nice ones. Like, yeah, definitely five hundred. Yeah, definitely five hundred. It depends how much you want. Maybe yeah. more. <laughs> so very impressive. Um, really nice. A really like a whole stand dedicated to teddy bears and like little cute cat, um, like plushies that you just like use as pillows, like little cute cat faces on. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, tons and tons of stuff. They had a whole store dedicated to retro gaming, so like they had like. SNES cartridges and N64 cartridges for sale. Well, fucking, I bet they cost all a lot boxed up. Like no, it was all reasonable. Like I think I saw Collection Zelda like boxed up like twenty quid or something for N64. It's not, you know, you're not paying through the nose. It's not too bad. Um, what else do they have? Lots of food stores, but um, the food stores had very long queues. Couldn't... So, what kind of food did they have? Did they have all like your traditional sort of like sushi and stuff? All like Japanese like street vendor food, so, like you know, takoyaki and. Takanyaki? I don't know. Yeah, stuff like that. And, um, what the hell? What's Takanyaki? Is that like um, the squid stuff? Yeah. And that like, Kakigori was like the shaved ice with um, like syrup over it. There's stuff like that. And um, yeah, like, tons of stores. But yeah, like I said, I didn't get to try anything because the, uh, the queues were like, like at least 15 minutes long. Quite, quite a big queue. Um, anyway, back to all the video games. Uh, Nintendo had quite a good stand over there. They were showing Pikmin 3, Animal Crossing... Um, what was it? Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker HD. How uh, did that look, man? Before very we nice. carry on, is it yeah. noticeably better than the other one? Definitely. I mean, if you, you know you're playing on a big HD TV, 
Everything looks very sharp, very crisp. Um, That's good then, because I mean, the Wind Waker still looks good today, but yeah. the higher res you get, the the like, the jaggier it looks. Like the jaggies don't affect it too much because it's cell shaded, but it's still noticeable. Is yeah, that it's, yes, I mean they've done a very nice you know job of porting over in the HD. Um, like if it came out today, like you you would have thought, oh my god, that's a brand new you know a new looking game sort of thing. You wouldn't have thought it's an old game being brought into HD. You would you would have thought it's just native, you know, a next gen game. That's how nice it looks. Awesome. So um, yeah, pretty excited for that. Yeah, the, the the Nintendo stuff was right at the beginning of the you know the huge. It was in um, Earl's was Court. That's it, Earl's Court. Uh, Earl's sorry. Court Two. Yeah, Earl's Court Two, the quickening. It's uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Nintendo's stand was huge, and they had some Monster Hunter stuff as well. The Troll Mutt, you know, the one on the Wii U. Um, Wait, was... they had Monster Hunter stuff there as well. Yeah. What? Was, pretty cool. was there any was there any cool sort of paraphernalia around it, or was it just a station? So yeah, just a station. Uh, actually, I think it was on the three DS. Um, they also had the the Capcom Cross. Uh, what was it? You know, like it's the Capcom Cross. Everything like what's got brings all the Capcom characters together. Oh, uh, the uh, the, no, no, no. the DS game, three DS. Yeah, game. the three DS game. Project Cross Zone. That's it, Project Cross Zone. They had that playing. Uh, Namco Bandai were there. They had All oh, Ninja Storm three. And the One Piece Dynasty Warriors game, which looks really cool. Yeah, did you did you manage to get a play on that at all? Uh, no, but I got some footage of it, and I was like standing behind a few guys who played it. Um, yeah, it looks very you know a lot of fun. I like Dynasty Warrior games, and uh, if you like One Piece, I would definitely yeah think about getting this See, one. Yeah, I was I was really tempted to get the first Pirate Warriors game, man, but yeah. I just didn't buy it because the only way I could find it was on download for forty nine ninety nine. Right, yeah, I think so, this is going to be quite rare as well. But no, it looks very nice. If if the sequel's coming out sort of boxed, there's a good chance I'll pick it up. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden. No, sorry, not Ninja Gaiden. Um, Naruto looks very good. Um, I was watching some guys play that, and I might actually pick that up because it's coming on Steam. You know, I didn't know. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's coming to Steam apparently. Ninja Gaiden Three. Yeah, God damn it, Ninja Gaiden. I've been playing that a lot on the VR all day today. That's what's <laughs> on my mind still. Um, yeah, Naruto. I've skipped all of them since um, Old Man Ninja Storm 2. Well, I guess there's only been one since then, right? The Generations yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't bother picking that up, though, because it felt like a stopgap. So yeah, this one's this for one, real. Like a straight sequel. Yeah, I believe so. It's got a ton of content in it. Um, loads and loads of characters. It still looks beautiful. Like, in, like It's definitely the best anime sort of style of game. Graphics are really nice. Oh, but, um, by a long shot, man. None of the other anime style games come close. The closest would be Nino Kuni, and I don't think yeah. that looks as good as Ultimate Ninja Storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I also swung by um, the Tales of Exilia stand. They had like eight screens set up, with, you know, with like giant screens and headphones, and just play, play the demo of Exilia. See, now that makes me jealous, man. I know yeah. we're, we're only, what, nine days away from release? Yeah. So I'm super hyped for it, and knowing that you've played it makes me hate you a tiny <laughs> bit, man. How did it's it play? Really nice. Um, really nice. It's, it looks beautiful. Uh, the combat's still you know, really fluid and fun. Um, yeah, the world map's good. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, uh, very, I just really can't wait to actually get in start my own file. I didn't spend too much time because I thought, you know, I just want to see how it plays, how it looks. I was very happy to do both, but I want to sort of save the rest when I start my pile. Oh, definitely, man. But, it's um, the kind of game that, like, you've got a weekend to yourself. You're just like, fuck it, I don't need outside interaction. I'm just going to lock yeah. myself away and just play this RPG for 60 hours. Exactly, yeah. Uh, super, super excited for that. They had the special edition on the show, so, like, you know the um, the figurine you can get? Yeah, how did that look? Did it look cheap or did it look good? Uh, it looked pretty good, actually. Um, but yeah, no, the uh, yeah, the figure looked very nice. Um, they had some reps there trying to you know get people to buy the limited edition. I just stayed away from there and just played the game. And went off. How much is it retailing for? Was it was it a hundred pound or like ninety pound or something? I think it's less than that. I didn't actually check. I think so. I've right. seen the limit for about seventy five. Seventy, yeah. Yeah, it's if it's if it's sort of seventy five, I'm I'm contemplating picking it up at this point if it's yeah, available the, places. The figure looked very nice, Ben. Um, something. I like, did send you a link to it before. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Um, what else did I do? Oh, so, <laughs> they had this stand, right? This bright yellow stand full of 
like imitation weapons. Like <laughs> from different games and anime, I'm assuming. Yeah, so they had actually just like generic um, like katanas and um, like knives and all sorts. And then they had loads of anime swords, lots of bleach stuff. Um, that I'm jealous of, man. When we go next yeah. year, I'm coming home with a Zangetsu for my wall. Yeah, like, dude, and the reasonable price is um, £60 for it one. It won't even look good sword. in my room. My room, I don't really have any sort of anime stuff up in my room. So it's just mm. going to be a random sword on the wall, and I don't give a fuck. It's going to yeah. go there, man. It's good, though. But yeah, uh, 60 quid for one, or £100 for two anime swords. So not bad, not bad. And they had, you know, everything. Um, they also had, like, you know, uh, Zabimaru, you know, that sword. Yeah. That like, comes apart. They even had that there, which is pretty Obviously, cool. in one full piece, right? Yeah. It doesn't, only one, doesn't yeah. exist. It didn't move. It was all, like, one solid unit, but they still looked really cool. They had lots of Final Fantasy swords, like a scaled down Buster sword. They had Sephiroth sword, not as long, but still pretty long sword. Um, yeah, and I accidentally bought a sword. You accidentally <laughs> bought a sword. I, I, so I went there, like looked for prices, like saw something like you know less than forty quid, and thought, oh my god, that's actually really cheap. And I kind of wanted one to play around with. And then, like I walked around, like saw the rest of the convention. Came back to that stand later <laughs> for like 10 20 minutes and then came away, came away with this box. So, See, um, you've, you've condemned yourself now, right? Because now, yeah. whenever you're in the house alone, suddenly you're going to be like a fucking samurai running around with that sword. Sometimes, pants, I just run up, probably, dude, sometimes I just run upstairs and unsheath it. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so, like, <laughs> put it away and run downstairs again. Like, nothing happened. <laughs> oh. Pro tip, right? Be mm. careful with it. Like, the other day when we were talking, I think we were playing Torchlight at the time. Yeah. I was playing around with that katana that I have, mm. and I cracked myself on the back of the head with it. <laughs> yeah. like, trying to hold it with one hand like a ninja, right? Yeah. And I thought, I thought it was fine. I was like, oh, that hurt. Like, I'm fine. A couple of days later, I had, like, a fucking cartoon lump on the back of my head, That's and I'd amazing. forgotten that I'd hit myself, so I thought I was dying. <laughs> like... <laughs> don't do that <laughs> yeah. well for this one the um yeah the blade's really dull but um the tip right at the edge is actually quite sharp so i have to be a little bit careful because that you know if i make a mistake that could cut someone yeah. <laughs> but um no i'm actually really impressed with the quality of the sword that i got um so like, you know proper metal um the blade looks really nice it's not exactly it's not actually folded steel but it's it looks like it is yeah um That's that's what you're going to get from, from those sort of places. Like, you're buying, like, an ornament, basically. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, for, yeah. it's for show, not for use or whatever. Mm. I'm pretty sure well, that, that katana that I have, if I ever swung it at anything, even a piece of wood, I, I reckon it would snap. Yeah, it probably <laughs> would. Same with this one. But it looks really cool, and it, it feels pretty sturdy. So, um, the, actually, quickly, the guy at the stand was saying, um, like, the laws have changed slightly. Like, this guy used, like, basically, uh, he was getting burgled. Yeah, and he grabbed his imitation sword to defend himself with. Yeah, ended up like hitting the guy with the sword. Yeah, uh, like doing some damage to him. Um, like the burglar sued the guy, but the guy with the sword won. Like, they, you know, he, he he sort of like came out of it fine. Um, so sort of you can use it to defend yourself, like these imita these imitation weapons. I guess so because somebody's broke into your house, right? And if you make the argument that it's an ornament. It's just the same as like grabbing a statue and cracking someone around the head with that, really. Well, yeah, like there are obviously those. You, you can't stab anyone in the back, or you can't hit him on the head. I think it was, but everything else is fair game if they're in your house. <laughs> the law surrounding that would suggest that you're not allowed to actively seek a weapon. That if it just falls to you, like if it's there, yeah. you're allowed. To use it, yeah. So I just sleep with a sword under my pillow. So it's, uh... then it's there. <laughs> it's fine. <yeah. laughs> oh, sorry. You and those cars, <laughs> man. Love those cars. But yeah, um, yeah, and I had to have it boxed up and like sanitate and see if it's like if you open this box while well, while you're not at home, you can be arrested. So, uh, but yeah, no, a lot of good fun. Um, what else do you have? They had lots of cosplayers there. So was there any? Good. Was there any actually good cosplayers, or were they all shit? Um, there were a lot of subpar ones. Um, but no, they had some really nice ones. Because really I've cool. seen that guy Jamie used to work with in full Naruto outfit. Not as bad as that. Um, <laughs> no, I'd say, yeah, some of them were really... So yeah, you know, a mixed bag, really. Some of them looked really cool. Some of them didn't look very good. Um, 
Yeah, but it's still pretty cool. They had like a, a section where it was like, you know, people got on stage and rated their outfits and stuff. But oh, like a just, cosplay contest? Yeah, exactly. And uh, we just sort of, we didn't really go in. We like just stood outside on the door, like peered in for a couple of uh, ones. And yeah, some of them were really good. Some of them were pretty awful. <laughs> we, should, uh, we should all chip in and deck you out as Cloud next time. Let's, let's do make, it. Make you win. I just, yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Um, I'll fund it, yeah. I'll yeah. buy it all and equip you, and you can win me some cool anime stuff. <laughs> all right, let's do it. <laughs> we should get Janny involved. Oh, Janny could be Zach. We'll get in some platform shoes. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. The Italian Zach. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, what else was there? Lots of clothes. Lots of Japanese style clothes as well. Lots of stores for food tasting. Uh, food, yeah, like food tasting and wine taste, uh, tasting. Stuff like that. Did you not manage uh, to get any food there, then? No, like with the food tasting bit and the wine tasting bit, you had to like buy extras on your ticket sort of thing. So general admission was like about twelve pound, and then you had to add uh, had add extra for your wine and food if you wanted to have a little taster session. Okay. But yeah, with with the food, uh, food stands, you had to wait in line. It didn't seem too expensive either, but I just couldn't have to wait. We had food anyway before we went in. Um, we had some stands about going to Japan and doing tours and stuff in Japan. Um, yeah, lots of art stuff as well. Lots of cosmetics. Yeah, no, but yeah, definitely next year we all have to go. I, I have to take you guys. Yeah, I'm but, yeah. totally down for it, man. Jamie, you'd come, right? Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. Mm, uh, you guys would love, uh, yeah, love it. I was surprised by how many video game stuff was there. It's quite a lot. Um, I just want £500 of toys. That's... Yeah. You what? £500 of toys. Standard. Huh? <laughs> nice, that's good. That's good. So, yeah, I was gonna say actually, you know the uh, the, the weapon stand as well. So the, the prices vary from like thirty quid up to I think the most expensive sort they had was about seven hundred and fifty quid. What the I hell was that? It was um fucking Excalibur. You know, <laughs> no, actually, it was a proper like I think it might have been like a real oh, properly like a, made katana, like a Is proper it? folded steel functional katana. Yeah, and it had like a really nice you know like, you, you see them like with like a fully flush wood finish where it's like there's no even like. Um, like handle, like hilt. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? The thing that protrudes. It's just like one sort of, one flush, like wooden stick sort of thing, the curved, and then you pull it out and it's got the real, you know, blade. That looks very nice. And you get a display case with it and stuff. But um, yeah, anyway, that's that's Hyper Japan 2013. Loved it. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm backpedaling a bit here. I love how I was like surprised that it was £750 as if that's expensive. I bet like, Proper swords command thousands, man. Yeah. I know nothing about that industry. I don't know why I was surprised at £750. Well, you know, it's, it's no longer an imitation then, if it's like that much. I think, you know, if you sharpen up that edge, that steel must have been pretty strong. Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, I loved it. Really Sounds good. awesome, man. Yeah, and that's why. I'd... Oh, and I need glasses. <laughs> I <laughs> I need glasses. Do you know the worst thing about you needing glasses? What? What, you're going to look good in glasses? Nah. Like, seriously, it's going to add some smart to your sexy and it's going to make you <laughs> even better. That's, that's the bit that sucks. <laughs> nah. You're going to be able to use a calculator soon. Oh, you can't wait. Before, I had no idea. But yeah, I've got some really nice frames. Um, no, nah, yeah. That's it. I had an eye test and need some glasses. That's, that's what I've been doing. Sweet. Cool yeah. story, bro. That's about me. <laughs> All right, Jamie, what have you been up to this week, Dean? Hello. I um I survived the purge this week. You survived the purge. Yeah, I survived the purge. I don't. I didn't get the memo. Did you guys get the memo? It's some sort of memo. What's no, the memo? What memo? What's know. going on? I don't know. If you live in Oxford this week and you're still alive, well done. Basically. Oh right. Okay. Now I get it. Uh-huh. What? But yeah. Oh for fuck's sake. I still don't get it. Ben, are, you read, are you playing ignorant? Read the news. For fuck's sake. No. What We're lucky to be alive, Ben. Yeah, you're lucky to be like. Never mind. I'm not gonna like yeah. dwell on that for too long because Ben's ruined it. Yeah. But I have been playing some video games Which for a little bit. Kind of just had a day to um, to sit down, put Pikmin three in the machine, and then like just finish it in one go, basically. Pikmin three, <laughs> talk to me. I can't tell whether that's saying that the game is short or whether you're just bigging yourself up as a Pikmin pro. So... I played, like, it took about 10 hours, so... Wow, so you hardcored it? I had to. I get, like, a day a week. 
<laughs> Alright, so how does it stack up against previous entries in the series? Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stop Google image searching Edwin van der Sar with glasses to see what Johnny would look like. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist. And I'm actually going to give you my focus now and my attention. Right. Ooh. So. <laughs> Fuck. Right. Let's start again properly. But yeah, Pikmin 3. Um, what, what, what experience do you guys have with the Pikmin games? Have you played? Zero. None at all? Mm-hmm. I played Overlord and Overlord 2. I played Oliver. in Smash Bros. <laughs> That's okay. So that's the closest you guys get. Overlord is is like a healthy combination of Pikmin and Fable. So you kind of got a little bit of it there. But uh, but Pikmin would see this this astronaut crash land on a planet, and then he finds this new little plant like species called the Pik. Well, he calls them Pikmin, and then they all have different colors, and then the colors have the different abilities. Okay. They've kept that running through the series then. So that's number one, and then number two, they introduced the second character. Um, so he's got his friend Louis in there, so Solomar and Louis. But now in the third one, they've uh, they've introduced a new uh, a new space ship team of three. Um, it's like Alf, Brittany, and Charlie or something. And Charlie's this captain, and and they're all split up on this planet. They've all crashed in separate locations, and then they start to work their way towards finding each other. And you know, so it runs in the same idea though. They find these Pikmin. And then the the Pikmin are used as like little slaves almost to help them. They, yeah. Essentially, that's what it is. It's like go pick this up. Or tools, just call them slaves. slaves. Yeah, just go pick this up. Go put it there, um, and fight this enemy. Do this. Um, there's no there's no real need to have played the previous two. Definitely. So there's no I story think. connection. They will connect, but in a way that. That's quite clever, actually. Like they'll be finding um, journal entries from Olimar, okay, who's who's also on this planet at this time as well, and then they start to piece it together, thinking he might have the bit of their ship that's missing. So they're then instead of just looking for their, you know, out in the wild, they go looking for Olimar, thinking he's going to have the parts they need to to get off the planet. And that's how it worked. The first one was about putting your spaceship back together, and this and it's carried on. And then in the third one, you're now just looking for your cosmic hyperdrive activator or something to get back off the planet um the premise in the first one ran that you had 30 days as a limit in this one i'm not sure they kept so much to that but that you have you have to have a drink at the end of every day and to do that you have to get the pikmin to gather fruit for you to like make into like a drink and so if you run out of juice it's game over basically okay so there is there is still like an element of time limit there as well yeah survival yeah yeah, and every day is timed as well. So you'll have the clock running along the top of the screen. And if you're left out in the wilderness and you've left Pikmin just randomly in places, they are going to die overnight. Like You have to be ready come that deadline at the end of the day to go back off the planet and okay. ready for the next day. Um, it's good. I mean, I expected about a 10-hour game, to be honest. There's only so much you can do when you're doing the same thing over and over again. Um, they've introduced some really nice boss ideas in this one, so that worked well for me. Um, I think the biggest hold-up, and the thing that got me quite a lot, is that sometimes I found the Pikmin doing things I hadn't commanded them to do. Well, or like sometimes going off yeah, on their own? Or... Well, and then like, more specifically that I would try and keep a nice, tidy, wide-open line to turn a corner, but they'd still manage to get fucking trapped on a corner that I didn't go near. And then that's it. They're, they're just going to stay there unless you realise you've lost a couple. Can I just ask, how did you play? Did you play with the Wii pad or did you play with the nunchuck and Wiimote? I played with the Wii U gamepad. And mm. how was uh, that? And it, I mean, it worked for me, but then when I was watching somebody play online, I was watching some videos, um, and he was clearly playing with the nunchuck and the Wii remote, and I think that might that might have been an easier way to play because you've yeah. got a better point and click element rather than dragging your analogue stick across the screen. That's what I heard. So I think, yeah, if I had the Wii remote, I would have probably played it that way. I'm surprised I'm surprised you couldn't use the actual gamepad touchscreen for more then. Like, it seems sort of it would be so easy to just sort of drag a selection tool over your Pikmin and then like have them all selected using the touchscreen rather than like making the, you select them with the analog stick and stuff. I mean when you're selecting Pikmin, you do it with a widespread circle perimeter by whistling at them. 
so it's quite easy to do it that way. Um, I found as you went along, there were easier ways to lock onto enemies and just command that they all go flying at it at once. So that helped. Like they didn't really teach me that. I had to kind of just remember that and pick up and do it again. Um, the bottom, the, the the gamepad screen was used as a map though, and that was quite a nice extra feature. Was there any sort of things that you could do on the map? Can you interact with it in any way? You could, if you touch it, it pauses your game, and then you can like you can analyze the map. You'll know where things are, and you can kind of plot your day out. Or if you're walking up a safe route and you've been there before, it opens it up on the map. Therefore, you could just click go here, and it will do the walking for you because you're able to split the uh, the astronauts up once you've got all of them you're able to split them up and follow separate paths on your own okay so you could essentially just set one to go do something and then leave them alone and go do your own thing see that's that's what i was talking about man like uh, you should be able to do stuff like that and if if it does work that way then that's cool i was thinking like almost like it could look almost like an rts on the map like with you selecting stuff and like selecting where it moves and that and then you could like use the analog sticks to go in real time on the tv that could have been a cool feature man i feel like i feel like that setup could work really well for a game and nintendo should maybe exploit it i think the way they have used it is almost a pro setup so that if you don't take advantage of these extra features you will get the the necessary bits done in a day to complete the game but if you if you use all three of them separately and you know how to play like that, you'll you could get the hundred percent completionist that way. Okay. But yeah. The, I guess the most important question, yeah, is did you enjoy it? Yeah, apart from those times where they really bugged me, I did have to put the pad down and walk out of the room for a few minutes. But otherwise, yeah, it's a strong game. Um it's So we use probably yeah, it's probably the best Wii U game since the Lego City one. And that's... I mean, that puts it up there as the second best available on the console right now, I guess. I also heard that they're going to... They weren't Nintendo thinking about making a Pikmin cartoon show. Can I know stream that? <laughs> I would love for that to be real, but unfortunately we're getting the Rabbids TV show, aren't we? Not, uh, what a shame. What a shame. But yeah. So yeah, it's good. It's a, It's... Not quite Lego City, but it's still strong. Um, other than that, this week then, I've been playing the new Super Luigi U. Oh, sweet. The one... Uh, yeah, they both came out. Week. All right. Well, no, they both came out on Friday. On like uh, Luigi U came out a month ago as a download DLC for the, um, for, the, for the Super Mario Bros. U. But you can get it as a standalone for a limited time in like a special green case. So I wanted to wait and be, you know... Special. Be special, yeah. I don't How want it as an expansion. So, how many GSC stars will you give it? <laughs> I don't do stars. I don't do stars. Oh. So you what do you think? Re- trying, to, trying to bring out a rating system. <laughs> <laughs> no rating system. Just start put it on the table. <laughs> you <can> leave it. <laughs> he knows I don't like them. That's what he's saying. Um, but are you still talking about Luigi? You've not gone yeah. back. To no, no, Luigi. Right. The thing about Luigi and the thing that they don't tell you is that it is fucking hardcore. Mm. It's, you know, they take the Mario game and they make it, like, three times more difficult. Wow. Yeah, so, like, for me, the Mario game, I just breezed through it, you know. like just went through that fine, as I did with the DS ones. But mm. this Luigi one, they've changed it because you've got Luigi's control system, um, mm. so you have to start to adapt to that. And I think once I'm in the swing of that, it'll be fine. Uh, they then only give you 100, le- uh, 100 seconds per level. Um, they've changed things up. They've made the maps a lot more difficult to navigate. They're, they're, they're clever. It is a whole new game. It's definitely worth a go if you enjoy the the, the, the Mario games. Yeah. So the levels aren't just remixes. They're actually full-on new levels? They're, they're set nice. within the same map, but then the levels within themselves are brand new layouts. They're completely changed up, yeah. It's not like mirror mode or anything either. It's completely changed. Hmm. I'm actually impressed that you're saying it's a lot harder, man, because one of the things that I was impressed with on the new Super Mario Bros. for the Wii was, like, how difficult it was, because the one, the original new Super Mario Bros. for the DS was piss easy, man. Like, yeah. that game was cake. And then the one on the Wii was so hard I got stuck. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And I, I didn't, 
I didn't really play much of the Wii U version. I think all I played was whilst I was at your place. Uh, and that seemed to be sort of the same as the Wii version in terms of like difficulty. Though. Uh, and if this one's tougher than that, then what would you say? It's one of the hardest Mario games we've seen for a long time. It's probably as hard as the first ever, you know, the Mario Bros on the NES. Mm. It's up there with that one. But the new Super Mario Bros U, that's that main campaign, just doing the main trail. I did that in about three and a half hours. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, like, because you just get so used to playing these games, and if that's what you're good at, then you do it, right? Yeah. But it's such a nice feel to have this switch up and there's them for to be like, here's the challenge for the Mario players that you've been waiting for. But like, that's where I come back to my first point. It's a bit upsetting that they don't really state that on the cover because one of the key things they're playing off of on this Luigi game is that you can play as Nabbit in the multiplayer and Nabbit doesn't get damaged. Like he's, you know, he's impervious to the, to the enemy's attacks and so on. But that doesn't help because when I'm then trying to play with my five-year-old thinking that's perfect for him, he can still fall off ledges. He can still get trapped behind the screen when it moves too fast, you know. What? Dang Nabbit. What is a Nabbit? <laughs> okay. Um, if you look at the box art from, for this game, and I think we spoke about this a little bit last week or the week before, they've completely kept Mario out of this one. Um, and when the Mario, when the yeah, he is. That hat is there on the desk. You're right. Yeah. Um, when the the new Super Mario Bros. U came out, they put this. They introduced this character that would go into like one of the Toad shops, nick something, and then go hide in a level. And then if you revisit the level, it's just about chasing him down. It's not about completing the level. You have to catch him, and then you get rewarded at the end. And it's just Nabbit the rabbit. It's just this weird character. He's wearing he's wearing uh, Bowser Junior's balaclava thing. Oh, okay, yeah, I see him. Like yeah, uh, see purple him. rabbit. Yeah, so they've taken Mario out of this completely, so he's not in the game at all, bar his hat being on Peach's desk. He's uh, dead. He's dead. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> days. Oh. Um, yeah, he was getting chased by paparazzi for a warp pipe and hit the side tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's been enough time. It's funny now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No. Oh, dry. Um, but yeah, I forgot what I was saying now. That's how far off the point I've got. But yeah, they've taken him out. They let you play as Nabbit. And it's still a bit of a struggle for, for the younger players. And I think they just haven't let us know that enough. But otherwise, it's still strong. Still very strong. How do you how do you rate it compared to a new Super Mario Bros. U? Forty six GSC stars out of. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's nah, serious. You're gonna have some sort of like Famitsu system. Of <laughs> yeah. Ten points awarded each. Um, it's up there. I don't think it's anywhere near the best Mario game, but it's still it's still a nice different challenge. Like I wouldn't want it to be that hard all the time. Yeah. Mm. But it's nice if that's how they want to go forward with the Mario games. You know, like, here's your game. And then for the challenge, let's unlock the Star World almost at the end, but with Luigi and stuff. So, well, the way it's going, the Wii U owners, the Wii U owners should be grateful that they got something. <laughs> just be happy they've got enough money to put games out, but we'll get on to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Is there anything else you want to mention? Um, just quickly then, this one's really for Johnny. I put my Assassin's Creed pre-order down. Oh, my God. Yeah, I thought I'd have a go. We'll see. Yeah. I'll join you there, man. It's got multiplayer. We can't ship out. That's that sucks. But oh well, I can still stab you. <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you mean that sucks? I think the the ship stuff is looking like the coolest stuff in that game, man. Yeah, it is. But I'm saying that the ship stuff isn't in multiplayer, which oh, is why okay. we can't do. It. If the ship stuff was in multiplayer, though, you'd all have like three balloons tied to your back, and you'd pick up power ups as you went around the sea. That would be amazing. I would love don't it. Don't tempt us with a game that's better than <laughs> the one we're getting, man. Yeah, did you check out that 13-minute video of Assassin's Creed, Jamie? No, I was watching a trailer with a really shit song over the top, so I had to give up. Fair enough, then. But no, it looks really good. I think I might join you in getting it. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games to give a go, then, I guess. Nick's here, that guy that sometimes plays Diablo. He's um, getting the PS4 and Battlefield. I think he's only getting Battlefield, he said. <laughs> nice. But, um, yeah, so he'll be joining us on that. More cool. people for the squad. They've increased it to five-man squads, right? Yeah. Five uh, man. Five man. So, so we can have Janny and someone else. If he ever comes back from Italy. Right. All right, that's it. Your turn, Ben. Well, I've really done much this week. I played a ton of FTL. 
that's pretty much all I've been doing, man. That game is hard as balls. Do you guys know FTL? What does FTL yeah, mean? It's only faster, faster than, than light. light. Right? Oh, this is that thing that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna big him up on the podcast. Just. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm gonna give him a mention. So, FTL is. It was a Kickstarter game, right? And it was made by two guys, and it's basically a starship management sim, but it's also a roguelike. So, you can't save. Like, you start off in one sector, and you're basically like an intel ship. You've got some intelligence on the rebel forces, and you have to get back to your fleet with the intelligence before the rebel forces catch up to you so you've got to make your way across like star systems like visiting different planets and stuff getting into fights like upgrading your ship and stuff and there's loads of random events where like you could get more crew or like you could get invaded like there could be like something will pop up and it'll say like there's a space station here being attacked by giant spiders what do you want to do and like you can either say, like, oh, I'm going to send over my troops and, like, some of them might die or, like, you might get a crew member from it and stuff. But it gets in- it gets increasingly hard, like, as you move through and eventually it's almost impossible, like, by the time you get to the final area, unless you've, like, done your ship up perfectly, it's really hard to do, man. Mm-hmm. But I've been loving it, mate. <laughs> like, it's one of those games where, like, you just get your ass kicked repeatedly, right? And you just enjoy it the entire time. So like every time I die, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm dead. Oh well, I better restart. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I think I've put like ten hours into it. Like and wow. I started it like three days ago. So it's been a few hours a day. Like and eventually I beat it. So that's a bonus. I managed to get through to the end, and it was awesome. You just beat it before coming onto this podcast, didn't you? I beat it again before I got onto this podcast with a <laughs> ship that looks like a penis. That was yeah. amazing. <laughs> I managed to take out the final boss as he took me out, but it counted as a win. It was awesome. Epic ending. That's how Mass Effect 3 should have ended. What? Mass Effect 3's ending's fine now, man. Leave it alone. <laughs> I've had my, my hate has been alleviated by that amazing DLC. But that's that's pretty much all I played this week, really. I didn't really anything else. Did you do anything else with your life? <laughs> no, not really. Um, I was still playing um, Knights of the Old Republic 2. But I got stuck on that, and I don't really want to talk about it because I'm pissed off with it. So <laughs> that's, that's pretty much all I did. You haven't started Tomb Raider? No, we sat there ready to go. I just keep finding other games to play. I don't mm-hmm. know why. I'm putting it off. You'll, you'll do Tomb Raider in one sitting. Do you reckon? Just do it. Yeah, six hours. See, everyone's telling me it's great, so I don't know why I'm putting it off. I just am. I just like, it's... oh, Tomb Raider sat there. Maybe I should play that. Uh, FDL. Like, this other game, like... I'll, I'll get to there? it eventually, and I'll love it. We should play some more um, Torchlight 2 as well. That was a lot of fun. You haven't been around though, man. And I, no. I don't want to play it without you. Yeah, well, soon I'll be around. Sweet. Cool. Well, that's that's pretty much all I've been doing this week. Nice and boring. Ah, no. I'll tell you what I did do. I watched season one of Young Justice. Good time. Oh, What's Young Justice? <laughs> Is it Justice? It's, the, um, it's like the, the new sure. cartoon oh. for the Supermans. Yeah. Oh, right. It's a, it's, that. Okay. it's a DC cartoon for kids. <laughs> uh, no good. It was alright actually. Surprisingly well written for a kids' TV show. I uh, don't like Young Superman. It does have Young Superman in it, except it's not. Yeah. It's like a clone of Superman who's half human. What? Yeah. We're not gonna I like the Robins. This. Yeah, Robins in it as well. Alright, let's move on anyway. It's quite good. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> um oh, lovely. Bioshock Infinite's DLC plans have been revealed. Yes, they have. Have you guys heard about this, yeah? Shut the front door. I'm really excited. I'm pretty excited because I've got Jamie's copy of Board, uh, of Bioshock, so we'll see how that plays out. No, I fucking want that back. <laughs> <laughs> it's not out until next year, though, so both uh, uh, both of these story parts have been confirmed for 2014. Oh, I thought one of them was out. Yeah, one of them... Well, oh, the, the small one that's coming out first is like a Battle Arena type game. Clouds. Yeah. Clash, the the clouds, Clash in the Clouds is coming out soon, but That's the other two are the proper storyline ones, and they're out next year. And they take you back to Rapture, the first game, underwater, yeah. and you play as Elizabeth. In the second part, you'll get to play as Elizabeth, but in the first part, you are Booker DeWitt, Private Eye. And it happens on Christmas Eve, so the day the Rapture collapses. Well, the stuff that they showed in like the, the previews and stuff, or the teasers... 
show Rapture looking like a nice place. Like Rapture is yeah. basically like Columbia, but underwater. Yeah, it's just before the downfall of Rapture, isn't it? I need well, two years before. Yeah, please, please hurry up and play Bioshock Infinite now because obviously with this DRC revealed, it kind of well, do so. plays a little bit on on what can happen. And who's stealing that car? That's who not... is stealing that car? You wouldn't steal a bear. <laughs> <laughs> And you and your brand of noises. Okay, anyway. Bioshock Infinite, we should get it next year. Moving on. Moving on. Um, the prices of the Xbox One peripherals have been revealed. Oh, and how much today? Um, it's going to be uh, about £39 for a controller, mm-hmm. uh, £18 for a headset, and the controller is £49 if you buy it with a play-in charge. Which is comparable today. I think we were, they, you know, they were selling fifty quid, weren't they, for the controller and the playing charge kit? It was fifty quid, wasn't it? My problem is, yeah. why the fuck is the playing charge kit still there? Why is this controller is not charged via USB? Batteries? Yeah, why is it still on batteries? It's true, but to be beyond this point, I can probably guarantee you that the PS4 pads will be fifty quid. Probably. But I wouldn't mind paying that bit extra. Because I never, I never liked playing charge kits. They burn out if you leave them in too long by mistake, and so I would stick with AA batteries. And then the cost of those over the years versus a controller that cost you just ten pound more in the first place. It just lasts. Yeah, my PS3 pads all work, and I've had them, you know, for a couple of years, four or five years. That's it. I mean, I, th- I think we're beyond AA batteries being in anything. Mm. I mean, yeah, solar powered dildos next. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm bitching. I always sound like I'm bitching when it comes to Microsoft stuff, right? But really, at this point, there shouldn't be batteries in there. Like, the PS3 has had a chargeable controller for, what, seven years? Mm -hmm. At this point? Like, surely that's enough time for Microsoft to be like, oh, well, maybe we could just put, like, a rechargeable power cell inside the controller and let them charge it up. I mean, how many hours do you get out of a PS3 pad? Like, up to 20? Oh, yeah, a long time. That's fantastic. Mm. Well, what is, you know the Wii U pad? Does that have batteries? Or is that built-in battery? That has its own power supply charger. Like, it has to have a separate socket. It can't be done on the USB on the front of the console. Oh, really? That sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a slight downfall to have to plug in another, you know, to it use up another outlet. But it's not the end of mm. the world. It doesn't still, suck yeah. as much as if it fucking had to take four AA batteries. Yeah, that's true. This, this yeah. is ridiculous, man. Yeah, it is ridiculous. Oh, it's like you just got a play and charge kit. What? <laughs> no, just give me a fucking rechargeable battery inside it. Yeah. Oh. It's Poor not game. like they've got a deal with Duracell or anything either. No. See, Poor now, now you're getting to the crux of it, man. I bet they do. I bet they're I getting... they've got... Yeah, it's shady bastards. Oh. You can self-publish on our console now because Duracell are paying us millions. <laughs> so they've also confirmed the adapter for 360 headsets, so they'll work on the Xbox One as well, right? Mm, they said they're working on it, so I guess they've taken just more feedback. Uh, but they've confirmed it's going to happen. Whether it's there at launch or not, I don't know. Mm. They'll wait for everybody buy, to buy the console and go, no, it's not ready yet. You have to buy one of these ones. And then just see the sales of the headsets go up and then go, okay, now it's ready. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. No one trusts Microsoft now anyway. Too but shady. I, people have, I mean, if it works for the, say, the Turtle Beach headsets and things, people have put a lot of money and time into those ones. Hmm. So I think I get some them. nice Astro gaming headset, you know, that work for PC and all the consoles. I don't know. We'll see. There is something to be said about having a nice pair of gaming headphones, man. Yeah, it made a huge difference playing Call of Duty back in the day when I used to play. Call of Duty. Call of Duty, man. I knew um, you were going to do that. All right, well, well... I knew he was going to say Dutty like that. Call of Duty. Then so straight. Trav coming out. <laughs> uh. All right, well, from talking about a console that's probably going to do quite well to a console that's doing shit, oh. uh, the Wii U is no longer being stocked at Asda stores. Now... Their reason for this is that they want to allocate more shelf space to the 3DS and consoles that are doing well. But the real reason, obviously, is that the Wii U just isn't selling. Yeah, You can't blame them. 
I mean, mm-hmm. if you owned your own shop, you got to treat it, you got to treat it like this. You got to think, I, I'm running this business. What's going to make me money? Are you going to put dead space out on the shelf? No. <laughs> Actually, put in the dead space. <laughs> I did. No, I didn't mean to do that. But then I was going to. I wouldn't put dead space three out either. It was shit. You're so yeah. clever. I was going to play on it and change that. No, <laughs> too late, Ben. You and your. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, All right. Dead space. Put game well... out on the shelf. Over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what does anyone know the actual figures? I believe. Uh, in the last three months or so. Oh, they're quarterly loss. Oh well, no, I'm just talking about the actual number of units sold. Oh yeah, yeah, they've um in the last three months they sold 120,000 Wii U units, right? Compared to one million Xbox 360s, and compared to 150,000 Wii consoles being sold in the last three months. Yeah, the Wii consoles beat. I wonder if the Vita beat it because that's just desperate if the Vita beat it. I wouldn't be surprised if the Vita did, man. Yeah. Um, I, there's an interesting, there was an interesting piece of information out there that, like, to date, I believe it's something around like 3.6 million Wii U consoles on the market, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and 4.5 million copies of Animal Crossing for the 3DS. Yeah. So there's over a million That's... more copies of that game than there was than there is uh, Wii U consoles in homes. I mean, Animal Crossing, since its release in the West, has delivered 1.6 million uh, copies over here, uh, UK, uh, UK and America. And the rest have just been Japan. They've had, like, nearly 4 million copies over there now. So the big question, guys, is do we think, you know, what we know is coming out <clears throat> soon, is that going to save the Wii U? So we have the Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker HD. We have the new Super Mario 3D Land game coming out for the Wii U. Yeah. Well, um, what else do we have then coming out? There's, well, there's there. Mario Kart's early next year, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and Pic Ben's just been released. I think it's enough to increase the numbers, but we keep returning to this point because it's it's upsetting to see it. And we saw it with the 3DS, but not to this extent. True. Yeah, I think the free like we like we did a big feature on how they struggled with with their initial months anyway with a console, but they need to fucking. They need to sort out a better release lineup. That's that's the problem, right? The reason this is happening is because there is no new Zelda, there is no new Metroid. There's no basically the series that people want. Yeah, like mm. people are crying. Out, I've even forgot the fucking name of it. What's their What's their pro F Zero? People are F-Zero, begging for yeah. a new F Zero, man. People There's want no it, and they just won't make it. Like. F Zero could be bigger than Mario Kart, man, if they handle it right. It's just yeah, because it would it would appeal to a bit uh, to a bigger audience in a sense. But I think here's the question now, then, and it's something that people are talking about in forums today since the since these figures are released. Um, are we going to see them going the way of Sega, and is this going to be their last home console? Are they going to end up? I mean, I know the 3DS would keep them afloat, but are we going to end up just seeing them be a party that just makes games for other consoles? Uh, they definitely wouldn't do that, I don't think. Um, if they got out of the home console business, they would stick exclusively to handhelds. I don't. I mean, think this they is it, should. isn't it? They have a they have a strong handheld, whereas Sega, when they were dying on their ass, didn't have any handheld to keep them going. They did. They had the uh, Game Gear. The Game Gear. I said, yeah, I said to keep them going, not a shit one. <laughs> <laughs> the Game Gear was about the size of a briefcase and took a load of fucking batteries. That's Microsoft. Why it, that's why it didn't work. That yeah. and the screen was terrible, man. I remember yeah. playing Mortal Kombat on that thing. Ugh. So, a few weeks ago, um, we were talking how like we shouldn't count Nintendo out, right? And I was this- I was definitely down for it. I was like, I'm not I'm not going to count them out with this. But this is a big blow, man. Not being stocked at ASDA. Asda are owned by Walmart, and for all intents and purposes, they are the Walmart of the UK. Yeah. Like, that's that's a big blow, man. Do you think we'll see Tesco and Sainsbury's policy? I haven't seen a single Wii U game in a Tesco's or a Sainsbury's or anything, though. I haven't. Like, across all of Oxford, I haven't seen... the only. I was saying this the other day, um, because there was a mix-up with my Pikmin game ordering online, mm-hmm. which then meant I had to go to a retailer... The only places I could have gone in Oxford to get Pikmin on release day would have been Game 
or Toys R Us. Wow. And even then, Toys R Us might have been a bit of a push for it. Mm. Catch and feed? They still do Wii games? They don't, they don't do new ones anymore. No, right, okay. They're just getting rid of their back stock. But it's upsetting. It is. Very. I mean, the console, the console has potential. It, it's a cool console. But I think Nintendo may have been a little bit drunk on success from the Wii. Like, because the Wii exploded, right? That wasn't Nintendo's doing. That was the fact that it was on all the new shows. Like, oh, look, these old people in this retirement home are playing Wii Bowling. They can play video games too and stuff. And, like, fucking it was on Oprah. Oh, you've all got a Wii under your chairs and that. Like, nobody's doing that with the Wii U. It's not going to blow up that way. Like, I feel <laughs> Somewhere bad. Somewhere in this room there is a Wii U run. <laughs> I feel bad. But, um, I do, but what, what the other you... thing that the other thing that looks bad with this then is that they've posted their figures for the quarter as well, and they're showing fifty million dollars loss for the quarter. Um, but when you investigate that, everything they they sold has made them a profit, but they've just put so much money into advertising that it's put them at the loss for the quarter. So in terms of actual profitability of the hardware, it's been okay. But it's just this, it's this advertising, and they're still not getting it right then, obviously. $50 million of loss, yeah? Yeah. That is so nothing to Nintendo, it's not even funny, man. I mean, no, obviously... Of they've, they've made enough to not care. Obviously, it would bother them, like, oh, we missed, we didn't get our targets, whatever. But, like, their coffers are so full... Like, they don't care, man, at all. Screwed the ducks. But this is the point I'm making. They've got money for that's, the it. that's the thing I'm trying to say, though. It's not, the loss isn't there because of the hardware not selling. It's there because they've just splooged it up the wall. I'm surprised that their marketing budget was that high. They didn't even go to E3, man. They just did a Nintendo Direct. <laughs> I mean, did that Nintendo right. Direct cost 50 million or something? Got to really fucking rinse up in water a little bit, man. Got to pay him some more for it. It's a water's mini bar bill. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so what what do we think then going forwards? Is this console going to Sega Saturn on us, or do you reckon it could come the back? The problem is, is that they do have a new Zelda cooking up. They probably have a new Mario being cooked up, a new Metroid maybe, and when they hit, they might be tempted. And a lot of other people might be tempted. For so, all it's worth, though, I do enjoy the Mario game that is coming out at Christmas. I, d I did enjoy the 3DS Land one. Mm -hmm. And I will enjoy this one, like with the cats. It'll be fun. But I want another Galaxy or another Mario. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, you're you're going to get that in the form of uh, Sonic, Sonic, aren't you? Yeah, but Sonic's still not Mario to me. He'll still be going through the screen too fast. Like, oh, wow, look at all these like, these HD graphics and stuff. No, I can't. I'm running. I'm Sonic. I've got no time to look. You're too slow. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Fucking Sonic, man. Uh, but the, um... it, doesn't, it doesn't help that um, you're getting, like, watered-down versions of games as well. Like, uh, Arkham Origins is going to have no multiplayer in the Wii U version. Yeah. And the That's... other formats are getting like a three versus two versus two mode or something. And it's like, there's just not even a one-on-one -on, -one in our, on the Wii U. Like, That's awful, isn't it? Nothing. And it's like, if there's going to be no support from these third parties, they can't just rely on their own stuff to carry them. Do you reckon it was a big mistake? They're not like being technical, you know, up with the PS4 and the Xbox One, like, being so technologically sort of, you know, at a disadvantage, yeah, yeah. Well, that they can't have a multi-platform, because, you know, you know, the new FIFA games aren't going to be on there. The Wii U is arguably weaker than the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, right? Yeah. There was rumours yeah. there was going to be more powerful, but... But it's not. Yeah. It's, it's so... Uh... And those consoles have got maybe three or four years of life left in them before mm. people just stop making games for them full stop. You're not going to see big titles coming out for the PS3 and 360 in two years time. Like that's going to be done, right? You're just going to be getting sort of FIFA and stuff like that showing up on it each, each year. So basically the Wii U is looking, well, I mean 
EA have already said that they're not going to make games for it, right? Yeah. yeah. I think they are going to make a couple, but they're not going to focus highly on it at all, are they? So, it's going to dry up, man. That's mm-hmm. that's the problem. Unless Nintendo can find a way to really pump games out fast and at quality, not just pump shit onto it, right? It's just not going to work. All the work's on them, isn't it? It's the big just... problem is, a lot of the other companies on the Wii just pissed out little mini game collections and they sold because of the install base of the Wii. Like, yeah. when your install base is 100 million strong, you can pump out shit like carnival games and you're going to make your money back just because of that how as well. There are. I call those the supermarket mum games as well because that's where they were selling. And this is probably why he has to pull out because they're not getting their little their little £10 cheap frills out of Wii games with this. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. But no, to, um, I watched I watched a bit of a playthrough on Infamous Second Son the other day, mm-hmm. and to think this is you know this is a console that's not out yet. This is going to be the first batch of games. There's still going to be so much to give. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine Nintendo consoles ever being able to to harness something that's so. Important. You and your cars, car man. Get that fucking car out of the podcast. <laughs> so I tried to mute it before it came past, but I failed. It's like you're recording in a fucking car park, man. Is it really that loud? <laughs> no, don't worry. Are no. you on the forecourt at Skoda? <laughs> yes. You have a car. What kind of... you, do need, you do need glasses. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of uh, Second Sun so far, then, man? Like, the look of it and stuff. I definitely came a little... That, I, 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 like I say, I was gutted about it not being a launch, but then we also talk about it being something to look forward to. It's going to yeah. be one of the... It's going to be so good. It does look awesome. I, well, I, was, I was a massive fan of Infamous 1 and 2, man, and I know you loved them as well, so... Yeah, definitely. I love the first one. That was good. I'm just a little bit upset that they've killed off Cole, man. I mean, I know... Hashtag spoilers. Fuck off, man. It's been out for, like, years, <laughs> right? Two years, yeah. Yeah, two years is enough time, man. People who haven't played it at this point aren't going to play it. At the end of that game, like, depending on which ending you picked, if you pick the good ending, he sacrificed himself, and if you pick the bad ending, he became, like, the big, all-powerful person. But right at the end, like, before it ended, you see a lightning bolt hit the boat that his body was on, which makes you, like, hold out hope. You're like, oh, maybe he is alive or whatever. And they're like, nope, he's dead. Like... <laughs> Or is he? Da, 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 da. Yeah, but he could he could just end up in this game somehow as well. Yeah. Then. Also, what I wanted to ask, Johnny, that's that's Troy Baker, right? Again in that game. Yep. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> he is the new Nolan North. There's no end to this guy. So he's yeah. he's voicing Delson, yeah, the main character. Mm-hmm. Who actually looks really cool, man. Really like, cool. I'm liking that character design, yeah. It's yeah, reminds me of Dante from DMC, doesn't make right? Kind of. A little bit douchebaggy. It, no, yeah. it's just... It, it looks like he's enjoying his powers, right? Like, mm-hmm. all through the infamous, infamous 1 and 2, yeah? Like, Cole used his powers, but he never really looked like he was enjoying using his powers. Like, he never looked like he enjoyed being a superhero or whatever, or having superpowers. It was just systematic. He yeah, it's fun, like, I have these powers, I have, I have to do this stuff with these powers, so I'm going to do it. Whereas the gameplay you see for Infamous Second Son, like... Delson's like cracking smiles and stuff when he like does the flip up in the air like he's like got this big smile on his face like he's having so much fun and that like which is what it would be like man if you had superpowers and suddenly you could do all this crazy shit like it would be fun it looks so good I don't know I, so long as they stick to that and like they don't have like oh you're abusing your powers or some bullshit like that would be awesome I'm excited hmm. for that game sorry I've managed to like spin us off into a conversation about it it's good yeah, I'm I, definitely, it. I definitely do want to play it yeah good stuff yeah that's uh, yeah. so there was uh, there was quite a bit of drama on Twitter this week which Twitter had some uh, this week. epic ramifications man do you follow both the guys no I don't follow the douchebag that narrows it down doesn't it <laughs> you mean, yeah you mean Phil I don't French. follow either of them okay. who's the other guy Marcus Beer or something. He does the Annoyed Gamer on GameTrailers.com. I follow right. him on Twitter. He's um, he's a Welsh guy. He's yeah, I think he's all right. He's definitely a bit harsh. He's a, kind of like the Liam Simon Cow. Well, <laughs> kind of, like he's a bit you know like rough. He's straight talking and um. Here's here's my take on this. Right, 
which will mean nothing. This is just my opinion. Phil Fish can be a bit abrasive, right? And he can say some stupid ass stuff. But at the end of the day, right, he is a fucking developer. Like, he makes games. That's what he does. He's not a fucking PR department or anything like that. He doesn't have PR reps that are saying, no, this this is what you should say to appease everyone. Like, the big companies and stuff do. Like, it's just him. So his Twitter feed is his own personal opinion and stuff. Mm. And for people to judge him based on that is, like, bullshit. Imagine if somebody judged me based on my Twitter feed. Half yeah, of but... my Twitter feed is just, like, coming up with crazy schemes for Janny and talking about bumming him. Like... Yeah, but... At least you're anodyne about it. He's just being a douchebag. Right. Can you just clarify, we're talking about Fez for people here. Yeah, so he's the guy who made Fez. Phil that, so Fez... That okay yeah, game. Phil Fish. Fez came to Xbox 360, and then when the PC version was released about two months ago, there was a lot of issues on Twitter back then as well. Um, and you had Cliff Blazinski sticking up for him. So there was a bit of a thing going on before, and he actually got rid of his Twitter account for a while back then as well because he went all suicidal on there and started telling people he was basically just going to go end his life and never come back to Twitter. But, and, then and then it's all the coming day, back round again. Right? Think, like, that guy gets a lot of shit, man. A lot of shit. Imagine, like, if you were just getting messages constantly on Twitter, yeah? Saying, you're a prick, you're an arrogant cunt, your game's shit, but stuff like that. But he kind of is, though. But... Like, why why should they judge him based on that, man? Fez was a good game. I mean, you can only judge people by what they say and what they do. Yeah, but... Um, he says a lot of stupid stuff. Saying, does... yeah, my point is, like, what does it matter what kind of person he is? Like, it doesn't matter what kind of person he is. Like, it matters what games he makes. If he was, like, a celebrity, like, oh, um... And he made his money through, like, him... Like, what he was like on screen and stuff then fair play to not like him because of that. But, like, he's not. He's a fucking creative. He makes games. So why, like, why hate on him for what he's like as a person? Well, I think it would have been better for everyone if he just didn't have a Twitter account. I think he just just make the game and just not talk to anyone. But that's, like... that's so stupid, man. Do you know, it, it's just super sad that, like, it shows off a side of our industry that I don't like. Like, the thing is, it's that guy as well. What was his name? Marcus Beer, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. he basically fucking slated um, Phil Fish on his show, right? Yeah, and Jonathan Blow. A bit yeah, well. and Jonathan Blow as well. He was slating them both, right? And he was saying, uh, what was he calling them? Um, just mad stuff, like calling them fucking like, whatever. Like, twats or something. Like yeah, like it. fucking twats. I don't know. I don't know the exact twats. He called them Totterpots as well. Yeah, which yeah, he did. Is, funny right but <laughs> only because the word toss pot is awesome right but why why would he do that right because phil fish refused to comment to him right yeah i don't agree about that like the thing phil is Fish shouldn't need to you know like, he doesn't want to comment he doesn't, microsoft he doesn't want to came comment. out and said that they're changing their indie development thing yeah mm -hmm. and this guy contacted phil fish and um jonathan blow, jonathan blow yeah about it saying oh what do you guys think and Phil Fish refused to comment. He said, like, you know, I, I want to wait for news to come out before I comment on anything. And then this guy went fucking mad, like, as if he had some right. Like, he was just super entitled bastard saying, like, oh, well, if you're not going to comment, like, then we should fucking boycott your game and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I, he called I... out for other websites to broadcast as well that they should boycott his games. What the fuck gives him the right to do that just because he refused a comment? Like, mm, he's a fucking true. small fry anyway compared to the rest of the gaming press. Like, it pisses me off, man, because this guy, all he does is fucking bitch, right? That's his job. He's paid to bitch. Annoyed gamer. Fucking suck my dick, you wanker. Sorry, carry on. I'm going to have to cool off a bit now, prick. Whoa. I'm, so I'm, I'm just reading some of these issues as well, though. Like, It's all this online stuff again because... They're talking about um, online abuse. Um, I can't pronounce it, but David Von der Haar mm -hmm. um, being made the subject of death threats last week. Because of the, the patch in Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which tweaked the stats of three of the game's guns. Yeah, and it's getting death threats. Fucking hell. 
Sometimes it's just not worth it, is it? They just close down the gaming industry. You see what I mean, right? But what what hope do we have in changing the mindset of the general gamers, right? The people just like us that consume video games, they love video games, right? How can we make them be less abrasive when there's members of the gaming media that are being way more abrasive than them? Like, to the point where Phil Fish has like stopped developing Fez 2 and basically said that he doesn't want to make video games anymore. Like, can you can you even imagine what it was like? Like, I, fair enough, he might not be that great of a person, but if you're getting like hate every day, right? From all like hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of people on Twitter, right? And then eventually the media just start doing it as well. Like where where are you going to go then? Like if the media and the fans are all doing this, like I just feel bad for the guy. Really, that pisses me off. Yeah. It's not a good world we live in. I mean, what what do you guys think, man? I'm ranting here. I want you to stop me. I think that everyone's a fucking game developer right now on Twitter. Everyone knows what it means. Everyone's yeah. everyone's putting out fucking games, and and they're all so special. That's what it is. Mm. I mean, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be the first to admit, right, that when you're in that sort of situation, you should handle yourself better, right? Like, he should be his own PR department. And that's probably the hardest part of being, like, a really popular indie developer, you know? Like, you're making these games, but you're also, you're also handling your own public relations. And, yeah, he, he did suck at that. But I feel for him because, like... Other big studios and stuff don't have to worry about that because they have entire teams dedicated to keeping their fans happy on like social networks and stuff. So yeah, you don't know the they're kind of anonymous in that sense, and you don't know the names of these people in the bigger companies. Rarely. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I feel like I've I've gone off it. I've I've gone over the top a bit here, and uh, I'm sorry for my little rant there. Say, but I just jump in and say I bloody me. enjoyed Fez. I enjoyed Fez. It was a good game, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a shame it's gone this way. And everyone was moaning at him, yeah? Like, oh, what, what do you mean you're not going to patch it on the Xbox? Because he had to pay $20,000 to patch it on the Xbox at the time. Keep in mind that he made that game himself. So that had yeah. to be $20,000 out of his pocket to patch the game. Like, that's not his fault. That was Microsoft's policy's fault. And I, I bet Fez would have got patched, man. If this shit hadn't have happened, now that it's free and he would have been able to update it for free, it would have got patched. But that's not going to happen now. Oh well. Shame. Bless I know. Him. I think we should. Uh, I think we should move off of this because it's getting me a bit too riled up. I get annoyed. <laughs> get a little grr. Get a bit of grr going on. Um, grr. Grr. Jamie, you wanted to talk. You wanted to know what the appeal of the Kickass franchise was. Right. Talk. Before I start going off on one about how I don't enjoy it, I think the point of this was just to like find out why people do, and then I just leave it to the floor to you two. And just tell me well, what what's going on. Why? Yeah. First, first, tell tell me tell me why you don't enjoy it, uh, and then I'll t I'll tell you why I do, and it'll be interesting to see if they clash. So I tell you, the the thing that's made me so angry this week is that they're now looking at Aaron Johnson, the guy who plays Kickass. To be Quicksilver in Avengers 2. And if they do that, I don't want to fucking go to the cinema because I think he is a fluffy moustached piece of shit actor and doesn't deserve to be on the screen. Why should I give him money? It's crap. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's serious. I'm not joking. If he is in Avengers 2, I don't want to go watch it. Who said this show's offensive? <laughs> There's so much hate in this show. Oh, God. Really? What? Just because of Aaron Johnson? Just because of Aaron Johnson, I would not want to watch Avengers 2. How do you know that he wouldn't be amazing as Quicksilver? Because he can't act. you got problems, Jamie. I haven't got problems. <laughs> you got, you got literal. Kick-ass is shit. All right. Like, so is that your only problem? You don't like the main actor? I don't like him at all. Have you, have you read the comic? No. My, that's worth checking out, man. Um, a lot of a lot of Mark Miller stuff is good, like, and Kickass is probably one of my favourite things that he's done, man. 
it's it's quite different in tone than the film was. Um, one of the, I mean, fuck it. Kickass has been out for long enough now. The biggest difference is that Nicholas is Nicholas Cage's character in the film, right? Yeah, like Batman. Yeah, like all the stuff that he says and stuff in the film was true. Like when he's saying that, like um, he got set up and stuff like that, and got sent to prison and that. That was all true, right? Whereas in the graphic novel, that stuff isn't true. He's just a massive comic book geek, and he lies about it. And like when they get to his um, when they get to his hideout, they find like a massive attaché case, like full of superhero comics and stuff. Like yeah, where, where he's just lied about that whole like thing, and he's actually just a vigilante psychopath comic book nerd. Like that was the main difference between it, man. That and like the extensive use of a flamethrower near the end of the comic, which was quite awesome. But the comic's actually quite enjoyable, man. If you don't like the film, like it's worth checking out the comic. It's the same thing I say about Wanted, man. You remember that film? Yeah, With, yeah uh, that film. Was, Angelina yeah. Jolie and that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That that film was a comic about superheroes and stuff. Well, super villains, more moreover. Uh, and they changed it completely because in the film it was like, oh, it's a League of Assassins or whatever. Whereas, like in the comic, League of they're, Shadows. Yeah, they're, in the comic they're basically Sorry. like the Injustice League. Like they're all the big super villains from around the world, like with superpowers and stuff like that. And it's it's really good, man. Like that's another one to check out if you haven't read it. Man. I just I struggle, right? Like when when Kickass was coming out, I saw I saw the name Matthew Vaughn attached to to direct it. And, you know, at this point, before that film, he directed Layer Cake and Stardust. Yeah. So Layer Cake is shocking because it falls into that, like, Vinnie Jones category of shit films that come out of this country, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then Stardust being based on, like... One of your favourite Neil Gaiman. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Neil Gaiman, like, my favourite author. So being based on that. But then it was adapted for screen by Jonathan Ross's wife. I can't think of her name right now. So the credit, just Jonathan Ross with red hair. Yeah. The credit (laughs) should go to her really, because she's the one who adapted it. So that's for her, right? Did you enjoy that film? I loved Stardust. I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought it was a really good film. Stardust? What's that? Well, like you say, it's adapted from the Neil Gaiman book. So it's the one about the, the star. Literally. It's about a star in human form. Not, not, not sunshine. No. no, not Sunshine. No, not. Because she also did that, right? I don't know. That's Danny Boyle, though, so I won't go near it. <laughs> he did the screenplay, maybe. I don't know. That was cool. Anyway, carry on. Sorry. So then he went on to do Kick Ass, and then since then we he's done X Men First Class. So he's kind of half and half because X Men First Class was great, Stardust was great, the other two no, right? So that was just one thing down, and I just thought straight away going into it with that, and I just I just didn't enjoy it when I watched it, and I don't. Seeing the trailers for number two as well, I've just got no time for it. Really? I've been getting really excited by the trailers for Kick Ass 2, man. If I have to, I just, I'm fed up of hearing Jim Carrey put on voices as well. That doesn't make you a good actor. Now you're ragging on Jim Carrey. Back off. <laughs> John is done, mate. <laughs> He's, He's fired, done two man. good, two good films have come out of Jim Carrey in his life in cinema. What are they? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and The Truman Show. I loved Ace Ventura. I know. No love for Ace Ventura. No love for Ace Ventura. Oh, man. Ace Ventura 1 was amazing. Yep. Two less so, but it was still funny, I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, the problem is, right, there was a lot of Jim Carrey films in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Like, he was in a lot of films over, like, a very short period, and it kind of made me sick of him. Um, but he hasn't been in many, like, big-budget films, like mainstream films recently so i'm kind of ready for him again like i'm hoping he'll be good in kick-ass too uh another thing i got excited is that um black scrubs is in kick-ass too as well is he yeah black scrubs is in it and i'm always down for more black scrubs man that's awesome i did not know that bit still not gonna watch it he's playing a character called i think it's professor gravity his superhero name Um, (laughs) i know he does it, obviously doesn't have any powers, but he has like a metal baseball bat that he uses to <laughs> add gravity to people's heads. <laughs> Aaron Taylor Johnson's pube moustache is almost as bad as Christopher Mintz Plaza's one. Do you not like? Do you don't like Christmas Plaza either. 
See, he was funny in Superbad, but that was because somebody was writing a good script for him to read from. I thought he was good in Kick-Ass 1. Uh, he wasn't good in role models or anything. Yeah, he was shit in role models, I'll give you that. Uh, he was good in um, This Is The End, but he was only in it for like... A <laughs> yeah, for two minutes. minutes. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it was enough that to doesn't... smile, though. Did you Rihanna was that? awful in that movie, wasn't she? Oh, my God. Who? Rihanna. Wait, in what movie? Oh, God. You just hate Rihanna, man. And, uh, Do you want to yeah. see her being terrible? Watch Battleship. Any woman who gets beaten to a pulp by a man and then fucking goes back to them a year later doesn't deserve any credit at all, ever. I think... Fuck I, off, some get of, on your Some love. of her songs are good, man. That's her right. One. I said it. Yeah. She wouldn't be that big otherwise, man. She's got some enjoyable songs. What, like that song that, that Can You Get It Up? That, I love that song. Wait, what? Can You Get It Up? She does literally sing a song about getting erections. So. Yeah. I'm not Sounds surprised, great. man. Bloodhound Good Gang boy. sung a song about fucking. Yeah, but that's Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> this is Rihanna. It's supposed to be a role model for like 14 year old girls. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess so. I, I, I can't hate on her, man, because A, I don't know her. Her style of music, like her genre of music, isn't one that I really listen to often, but I'm not. But like, then, like, Bloodhound Gang aren't going to get your little 16 year old sister to go and suck a boy off around the back of Quicksave, are they? That's what Rihanna's songs are about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty sure I haven't heard those lyrics in any of her songs. <laughs> <laughs> she directly hey, mentions Quicksave. Suck a boy off around Quicksave, hey. I think if you play the song in reverse. <laughs> just, <laughs> just subliminal messaging. I didn't even, I can't even speak. What have you done to me? Hidden track, two fingers <laughs> up the Audi checkout. Oh, just hidden messages about sucking people off. Yeah. I'm going to have to start playing her music backwards to look for it now. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, back to Kick-Ass, man. I think... It's a pretty good story about like what would happen if somebody decided to go out and be a superhero and basically got in over their head. Like, let's be honest, if any like normal person like just dressed up as a superhero and went out and started fighting criminals and stuff, like they're gonna get fucked up. Like it happened. What? It happened in real life. Yeah, that guy got arrested, didn't he, for trying to be a superhero. What? Probably got put in a mental home afterwards. <laughs> what about? You can't, oh, no. you can't legally be a vigilante, man, because... That was, it is that was bad for song. justice. Can you get it up? <laughs> I'm not going to watch it, basically. I'm not giving them my money. I didn't give them my money for if the I, first film. I fucking watched it online. They can if I paid off. for your ticket, would you come and see it? Nope. Even though, if, you, even though you dragged me to the cinema for seven hours the other week. Me and Ben will pay for a ticket. Yeah, but when we went to the cinema for seven hours, at least you saw two good films. I saw three good films, fuck you. You saw two good (laughs) films. (laughs) I tell you what will get my money in the cinema, and that's Only God Forgives, and that's out this week as well. It's supposed to be really pretentious and misogynistic. Jamie will love it. Yeah, but if Drive wasn't wasn't pretentious, then what is? I still haven't watched that yet. I have two films of yours left here to watch. One of them is Drive, the other is... um, that one with the other Bradley Cooper film. With Silver the, Linings. That's the one, Silver Linings Playbook. Please watch it. I'm, I'm going to watch them, man, as, so, as soon as possible. Probably tonight, actually. I might go and watch it. Hey, do it. Watch some Silver Linings and let me know what you think. Hey, you won't. Well, it's, it's got the hot one from Hunger Games, man, so I'm down for that. No, I don't know about hot, but it's got the one from Hunger Games. She's cute, man. She's got eyes. There's something about them eyes, man. Yeah. Anyway. You say so. <laughs> Is there anything anyone else wanted to talk about? Because it's getting to be about that time. It's getting to be about that time where you just completely glaze over the fact that Bradley Cooper's got the eyes, not her. I, they've both got eyes, man. That film is all about eyes, all right? They do, indeed. Like, factually, right now, they do both have eyes. <laughs> and also the hills. <laughs> we, should, we should probably end. <laughs> we should. Is there anything you guys wanted to mention? I shouldn't have come into this podcast really angry about Kick-Ass, because it's just, it's just ruined the whole podcast for me. <laughs> Why? I've actually just been a cunt for the whole podcast. <laughs> Why well, just waiting to be angry about Kick-Ass? Yeah. What we should do is we should force you to sit down and watch Kick-Ass 1 with us again, and I reckon you'd enjoy it if you watched it with us, man. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it's one of those things where, like, 
I enjoyed Pineapple Express way more when I watched it with you guys than I would have done if I watched it alone. It's true. So we should uh, we should do a viewing of Kick Ass Man and see if we can change your appreciation of it. Right, we're going to Jamie's house. Yeah, we're going to force our way into your house like a home invasion. We're turning it into an IMAX <laughs> theatre for one night. <laughs> It'll be awesome. You'll love it. Anyway. Yeah, um, we'll watch loads of Michael I'm Bay films. I'm ending because apparently my computer needs to restart because AVG is shit. Um, Fuck you, AVG. <laughs> Why don't you guys actually buy an antivirus? Bet so you're just... in kick ass. Well, because I, <laughs> I'm cheap, all right? Anyway. <laughs> Uh, if you want to get in t- contact with us, uh, you can reach us at GSC underscore games on Twitter. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me directly, it's XWGX Lauchi on Twitter. Uh, if you want to get in contact with Johnny, it's J I Y O N I underscore D E S U. Cool. Uh, and if you want to get in contact with Jamie, it's J A I M E underscore Connolly. Sweet. And. Even though he's still in Italy, we can plug him as well. If you want to get in contact with Janny, or if you even remember who Janny is, uh, you can add him on G5PAG. So, thanks for listening to our rant-filled show. Cheers, uh, guys. The full of the hate. The <laughs> full of the hate. Of hate. <laughs> and, uh, poetry because of hate. Thank you guys for joining me as well. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.